John chapter 3, verse 7. Now, Quran chapter 3, verse 7 says, Huwa lazi anzala alayka al-kitaba minhu ayatun muhkamat hunna ummu al-kitab wa ukharu mutashabiha fa amma al-lazina fi kulubihim zaygun fa yattabi'una ma tashabaha min ibtigal fitna wa ibtigal ta'wil wa ma ya'lamu ta'wilahu illa Allah wa rasikhuna fi al-ilm Yakuluna amanna bihi kullun min indi rabbina wa ma yazakkaru illa ulil albab. Now what is this verse telling us? This, this verse is very essential when you are dealing with uh, the, the verses or the signs you see in the Quran. You don't rush into conclusion to take it in similarity. They might look similar, but they are not the same. So God says, Hu allazi anzala alayka al-kitaba. He is the one who has revealed the book to you. That is Muhammad, alayhi salam, right? Then God says, Minhu ayatu muhkamat. Muhkamat here means something which is precise, something which is, which is imperfection, which can be used for, for judgment, right? Muhkamat, right, in a plural form. So this ayatun are uh, in plural form. It's a plural form. Then muhkamat is in a plural form. So he's talking the plurality of, of signs that you see in the Quran. So they are very precise and they can be used straight to the point. That is why Quran chapter 5 verse 44, verse 45, verse 47 says, bima anzala So whoever does not judge by what God has revealed, then he is a disbeliever, he is an immoral person, and he is a transgressor. So among the verses of the signs you see in the Quran, some are precise to the point and can be used for judgment. Muhammad, right? Then God says, Hunna Ummul Kitab. And they are the main source. They are the source of the book. When we say Ummu, something which is a main thing, which is the source of everything, which is the origin, which is the mother, right? So here in this context, the Ummul is the source of the book. That is the main source of the book. Then God now says, Wa ukharu mutashabiha. And this mutashabihatun is also in plural form. So telling you the other verses are also in plural form, which means they are similar. When we say tashabaha, uh, uh, or we say shabaha or shabiha, that means something which resembles or similar to something. They are similar, but not the same. Put that in the back of your mind. They are similar but not the same and i'll give you some examples for instance when you go to the quran you find words such as malik yawmiddin the word malik and malik are not the same so when you go to surah to nas it says Kul nas. then it says malikin nas in that verse it says malikin nas king of mankind when you come to chapter one surah to fatiha it says malik yawmiddin it is different from saying Malik Yawmiddin. Malik Yawmiddin, God is the possessor. He possesses, he owns the day of judgment. Because ever since the world was created, we don't know any other God who is claiming to have the day of judgment, unless the creator of the universe. He owns it. So he is the owner of the day of judgment. But when you go to Surah to Nas, it is talking about a king of mankind. Right? He's talking about king, Malik. Even though they are coming from the same root word, they are not the same, but they might be similar words, but they are not the same. This is what people should understand, not the same. You see, then again, we have the example of the word hikmah. When you take the bilarakat, ha ka ma, ha ka ma, huh? as a verb, ha ka ma, it means to judge, to be wise, to be precise. You understand, to, to, as a verb. But then out of that word, we can get what we call hukuma. Hukuma becomes a judgment. Now, when we say hukuma, it's different from saying hikmah. Now, what is the changes here? I will show people why I'm, I'm, I'm explaining this part. You see, we have hikmah and we have hukuma. Do you see here? Now, both of this, both of this word come from the word hakama.
both of those words up there, it comes from the word ha ka ma. Right? The words, the two words above, they come from the word below, hakama. Now, this hakama down there is a verb. You see, but now when it changes to hikma, it becomes wisdom. It's talking about wisdom now. When it comes to hukuma, it's talking about judgment. But somewhat, because they share the same root, it tells you that you need to be a wise person in order to judge. Or you need a book of wisdom in order to judge somebody. Because you don't expect a fool to be a judge over somebody. You see? Uh -huh. But even though they look alike, but you can see there's a difference. The upper one says hikma, which in Arabic we will have the hair and the kesra. Then we have the down one says hukma, which will still have the hair and then we have the dhumma on top of it. But the, the, the root stays the same. You see, it's the same structure. They are similar, but not the same. There is a difference and they mean two different things. They are not the same thing. And you find such things in the Quran. So just because they share the same root word doesn't mean it's the same thing. I hope you, got, you get what I mean. And again, the next example is Hajj. We have Hajj. Right? We have Hajj. Then we have Hajj. Like this. You see? Uh, let, let me see if I can get the Arabic. And I'll put it next to it like this. This one like this. And then we have this one. Now I'll put it next to it like that. Now, you see what I put on the screen. The first one above, this hatch above, the one I've highlighted, this is what we are discussing today, hatch. This is the pilgrimage, right? But like I said, when a word becomes a subject, you have to stick with the subject in order to understand the context. This down below, this upper one is a noun. It is a noun. So I put N next to it, right? It's a noun. Then the one below, we cannot use a definite article right now to, next to it because we need to understand which word it is. It's a verb. This one is a verb. You see? This is a verb. But then in some context, this particular hajj you see here, can serve as a what? What we call in Arabic uh, 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 a dua, a dua of a noun or of a verb, or we can say uh, what word can I use? Or we can say ismul uh, fa'il, or we can say a noun of a verb, or dua of a noun, or dua noun. We can use such words. So I'll give, I'll give you some examples where you can understand this. So when we say hatch, we are talking about this first one, which is a noun, the pilgrimage, this one. And when we say hajj, this one, hajj, as a verb, we are talking about argue. So somebody will ask, what is the noun version of the one below? The noun version of the one below it becomes arguments. This argument, we can say hujja. When it becomes a noun, it will become hujja. As a noun. This, the first one, hajj, up here, when it becomes a verb, it can be hajj, hajji or hijja as a verb you see and when we have the one who practices 
who who does the pilgrimage that who uh, pilgrimize right the ones who practice the pilgrimage in the quran we use the word had or al hajj the pilgrim right al hajj or hajj so here it becomes a, a what a dua of a verb or we say the what the noun of a verb So it becomes like a fa'il. In Arabic, we say fa'il. So his no, this one becomes no more a noun. It becomes a fa'il. And I'll, I'll be going to the Quran to show you the difference, right? So the mistakes we see people doing is they misunderstand the word hajj and think we are talking about hajj, which is the one below here. The one below here is for about argument. Is to about debate about argument and i'll show you the examples in the quran the one below here is a verb hajj this is a verb based on the context it's used then the one above here hajj is a pilgrimage as a verb hajji hijja as a verb then we have hajj as a fa'il not not as a, a verb here that's the one you see below here not as this but it's written the same way. That is written the same way, but this one is a fa'il, which is the dua of a, of, of a verb, right? Okay, so I'm going to the Quran to show you what I actually meant by, by what I'm saying, right? Good. So now let's delve into the Quran. I was talking about how words can have the same root word, but they mean two different things. For instance, I showed you on the screen the Haji and the Hujja, this, they share the same root, but they are different. Hujja can mean argument, can mean proof, right? As a noun. But when we say Haji, we are talking about what? Now we are talking about the pilgrimage based on the its use as a subject. Even though they share the same root word, but they are not the same. Then we have, for instance, the word Kaaba. Kaaba. The Kaaba normally has Tau Marbut at the end. The Tau, which looks like the one with the two horns. The, the word Ta at the end with the two horns. That one is actually denoting the Kaaba. It's a definite article. It is a noun. Is pinpointing the Kaaba, the cube, the house. Whilst when we say Kaabain, for instance, Quran, Quran chapter 5, verse 6, that is talking about your heels or your joints. That, even though they share the same root word, doesn't mean they are the same. One word in the Quran can have multiple meanings. You just need to understand the subject before you can put it into context. And this is how people play with context. Do you see? Uh, so what I'm hinting at is based on Quran chapter 3 verse 7. Some of the signs of the Quran are similar, but they are not the same. Just because they are similar doesn't mean they are the same. They are different. You see? So now, where can we find the Hajj, hajj I'm talking about to be argument? When you go to Quran chapter 2, verse 200, and uh, let me put it here. We have here the Hajj I'm talking about, the Hajj or Hajj. This is a verb here, as a verb. It is equal to Hujja as a noun, which is about argument or debate. When you go to Quran chapter 2, verse 225, it's talking about the one who argued with Abraham. So you see the Hajj used there for argument. Chapter 6, verse 80 is used Hajj for argument. Chapter 3, verse 20 is used Hajj for argument. Chapter 3, verse 61, Hajj for argument. Chapter 3, verse 65 to 66, Hajj for argument. Chapter 3, verse 73, Hajj for argument. 40 verse 47, Hajj for argument. 2 verse 76, argument. 2 139, as a verb. All these things, verse, uh, verses I'm showing you, they are used as a verb, which is Hajj. 
which is to argue. But then, as and now, Hujja, if you go to six, chapter 6, verse 83, Hujja is used as a now, which the verb is Hajj. Do you see? And the verb is written with the Alif Madda, it's written Hajj with the Alif Madda in the middle. So when it becomes a now, it's Hujja. So chapter 6, verse 83, Hujja. Chapter 4, verse 165, Hujja. Chapter 6, verse 149, Hujja. Chapter 42, verse 15, Hujja. Chapter 45, verse 25, Hujja. As a noun, they are all used as a noun. Now, what I want people to understand is, in one verse, chapter 42, verse 16, it has been used both as a verb and a noun. So let me help the people to understand what I mean. In Quran, chapter 42, verse 16, to understand that this Hajj is different altogether from the pilgrimage we are going to talk about, they are not the same. They are different. But most people don't understand this structure of Arabic. So they, are, they, they try to play with words and always tell you, oh, Hajj is about argument. It's about the great debates. No, it doesn't mean that. Right? Uh-huh. So now I take you to Quran chapter 42 verse. Now this is the verse. In the verse... He says, Wallazina, uh, you had Juna Filahi min badi ma as to jibalahu. Then he says, What? Hudja to whom? You see, Hudja to whom? Now, what I want you to see in this verse is it mentioned you had Juna. You had Juna is a verb which you can see had ju, had ja. That is the verb. Then he says, Filahi min badi ma as tujiba lahu hujja to whom? Then he says, What? Dahidatun in the Rabbim wa alayhim gadabu wa lahum azabun shadid. Now in this verse, it mentioned the verb of hujja and it mentioned the noun of hajju. Here it's not talking about the pilgrimage. Here it used the verb to mean the argument, those who are arguing about God, Hajuna. You see, it is not about the pilgrimage, it's not about the Hajj here. So this is the verb form of the Hujja. So Hujja is a noun for argument, whilst Hajja or Hajuna is the what? To argue as a verb. So in Quran chapter 42 verse 16, you have both the verb and the noun. So that point is clear now. So now let's move to the main hajj itself, the pilgrimage, where it is used. And I'll put it that one to on the screen. And then to break this point down, then we move on to the topic to clear this misunderstanding, right? Now I'm sharing the screen. This is actually going to talk, we are going to talk about the hajj itself, the pilgrimage here in this. Now you can see Hajj. This is the this is the the fa'il, the one who does the Hajj is a Hajj. That's why you hear people say Al Hajj. It doesn't mean a debater. No, it doesn't mean an, an argue uh, somebody who likes argument. No, this is somebody who who does pilgrimage, who pilgrimize, right? As a, a as a doer of that action. So Hajj. Then we have Hajji, Hajj, which is the noun which you find in Quran chapter 22, Surah Al-Hajj. Then we say Hijju or Hajji, which is the verb that you do. So Quran chapter 9, verse 19, you get to see Al-Hajj, somebody who is a pilgrim, who does the pilgrimage to the, uh, for the Hajj itself. So you see it's Quran chapter 9, verse 19. That is the, the fa'il. Then you have Quran chapter 9 verse 3, Quran chapter 22 verse 27, Quran chapter 28 verse 27. You see the plural form of Hajj, which is the Hijaj. Hijaj, the plural form. Quran chapter 28 verse 27. So then you go to Quran chapter 2 verse 189, you see the Hajj. Quran chapter 2 verse 196 to 197, you see the Hajj. But here it is a noun. It is not talking about debate or argument. It is about pilgrimage, a journey to a sacred place. 
that is the hatch here. So those are used as a noun in the these verses I just mentioned. So Quran chapter 3 verse 97 and Quran chapter 2 verse 158, they are used as a verbal noun or we can, we can say as a verb. Where God says, uh, Right? Right? The, the word hij is used to mean a, a, as a verb you do, action you do to the house. You see, now for people who don't actually understand the structure of Arabic, I know what I'm saying now might not make sense to you, but I'm doing it for a purpose. And this reference will help people later on and they will understand the structure I'm explaining, right? Uh, so have patience if you think this is wasting your time and this is not what you are here for. You cannot be talking about the end of something when you don't know how it begins. So try to understand. Always the roots and structure of everything is the key so that you will not be lied to. Yeah, thank you. Now, let's move on. Now, I've shown you that this is the real Hajj we are talking about, the pilgrimage. Right? We are not talking about the debate or argument, the hujja. There is a different thing altogether. So people miss, uh, like, what they do is they 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 put them they misquote or they put a misconception, thinking that since the hujja is also related to Abraham, that means Hajj is only about debate. So you see people saying Hajj means the great debate. We have to go and debate. Debate with who? <laughs> you understand? So when people miss the subject, they will miss the context because they have no idea what is being discussed. 